Welcome to Designing Data-Driven Experiences, a session about emerging tools for rapid prototyping with data. I'm Chris Michelle, a design manager on the Looker application platform team, whose mission is to empower developers to craft rich, tailored data-driven experiences using the Looker platform. Hi, I'm Jared Hardy, and I work on the application platform with Chris. I mostly focus on Looker design system and Looker components. Today, we're gonna to give you a quick overview of design thinking and our design tool of choice, Figma, how we can create prototypes using real data and illustrate how much simpler developer handoff is when we work with real data in our design files. So to start off with design thinking in Figma. Design thinking is a process a lot of teams use to ensure that they understand their users, challenge the way that they might think about those users, and really make sure they understand the problem that their users are facing to ultimately end up crafting innovative solutions through quick cycles of prototyping and testing. A lot of time, design thinking is represented with a double diamond graphic like this. The team starts out exploring the problem, opening up opportunities to settle on a specific problem that they'll be tackling for that sprint. Then they'll start exploring possible solutions for that problem, build prototypes, test them with users, and ultimately deliver that solution for the problem. This repeats over and over again across different features and problems in the product. This enables teams to move really quickly and efficiently to not get stuck trying to solve too many things at once because they know they're gonna be able to go back to the beginning of the diamond really soon. Here's the area of the diamond that we're gonna be on right now. And we're trying to get our feature to be moved toward being shipped and we're gonna walk you through how that goes. So Figma is a browser first design tool that we use to prototype and test our ideas throughout the design thinking process. So why Figma? There's a lot of great reasons we like Figma. Some of the main reasons we like it are its prototyping features, its plugins, and its components. Figma has a rich prototyping feature that allows us to build and test key interactions and transitions that we want to display and test with our users instead of just showing them a static screenshot. We also like to leverage Figma plugins to augment and improve our workflow. So we can leverage existing Figma plugins or write our own. With a little bit of JavaScript, we can write our own plugins to programmatically interface with Figma. And this opens up a whole new world for us, like designing with real data. And there's components. And those are reusable assets that we can leverage to maintain consistency and quality across our files and projects. This allows us to have a single source of truth for things like buttons or composition of elements like a page layout. And so if we need to go update that button or that page layout, we can update it at one place and get those changes everywhere. When we're working within Figma, we're generally working within three major areas of the application. First is a top bar along the top of the application, and that's where we create all our foundational elements within Figma. So things like rectangles, ellipses, text nodes, and frames. There's also tools that allow us to comment and also move around the file right there. The layer panel on the left is where we create or where all our elements that we create are listed. And this helps us maintain and organize our files by creating pages. And it's also where we can access local components or ones that are shared in the team library. And lastly, on the right, is the design panel. And this is where we can adjust the properties of our elements we create. So things like changing the width of an object, or changing its background color, or applying a font to a text node. There's also the prototype and code panel, and this allows us to build prototypes there and also get CSS values of selected elements. Looker and Figma are a match made in heaven. They both provide a powerful API, one for real-time data at scale, the other for bringing everyone in the EPD org together into a single file to collaborate in real time. And they were both built browser first. One example of this type of integration is prototyping with real data. Let's use an operational use case. We run an innovative lemonade stand that can predict surges in demand with machine learning and artificial intelligence. We track the ETA of suppliers with a fleet of IoT sensors, and our team can get actionable insights via this operational app. So that way they can order more sugar or lemons to deal with procurement, they can get suppliers to expedite shipping of materials to deal with logistics, and they can hire part-time workers to handle the periodic demand and surge and deal with staffing or other operational needs that come up. The feature we're going to be designing is a weather prediction callout that highlights hot days that might surge desire for lemonade or warn of a rainy day when a big sale is scheduled. Our goal is to create a prototype for this feature that we can hand off to our developer who's going to implement it in the app. But before we get into that, let's see how things might go when we don't design with real data. When we're prototyping without real data, we're doing our best guess to try to solve different scenarios. And we usually end up with lots of generic data inside our designs 
and they only work for ideal scenarios. In this example, things like city and temperature are generic values we chose, and they only work well for this one scenario. We take these mockups with a prototype and begin the developer handoff cycle, maybe by sending the developer a link on chat. The developer takes this prototype with generic data, and they have to go begin implementing it. When we're designing without real data, they have to take this prototype just at face value, and then they go off and begin implementing it. And what usually happens is something break. A scenario we didn't account for comes up. Developer has to stop working and reach out to designer to try to find a resolution to their problem. For example, our design with the generic city name, it worked well in our test case, but what happens when the name gets really long? Here it breaks and the developer needs an answer to how to treat longer city names. Another cycle of work has to happen. The designer has to go back and work and update the prototype and then send it to the developer and they go off and begin implementation again. And then what ends up happening is another edge case comes up that we didn't account for. Here, the temperature, when it's three digits, breaks our designs again. The cycle can go on and on, depending on the, how complex the problem is and how many edge cases a designer thought through. Designing a prototype using real data can answer a lot of these questions up front before we begin the developer handoff cycle. Now let's illustrate how designing with data can make that better. We can take some data that was given to us by our Looker analyst, or maybe we explored it ourselves if we know the tool good enough, and we can figure out exactly what types of data we have access to and what pieces that we might want to use and take advantage of in our designs for the weather feature. We can see that some of the city names are really long and know that we only have so much space on a mobile device, so we've got to take that into account into our design. Oh, and I can also see that we need to be able to support a three-digit temperature. Now we can include these in our first design pass to make sure we've included edge cases in our UI designs. You can see a three-digit temp and a long city name fit perfectly well on a mobile screen in our final design. Some of the other common downfalls in, in designs are around internationalization, words wrapping, performance when you might be loading in a lot of table rows and you need to account for pagination or lazy loading, Sometimes designers forget about empty states of a page or null values when something returns with nothing. Or if you use lorem epsum or placeholder text, the developer might just straight up misunderstand what you meant, uh, depending on their understanding of those words. So we're going to wrap this up and send it off to the developer. They said that the prototype was great, and they told us that they were able to build the feature quickly without a lot of questions or edge cases popping up from our design files. There was a lot less back and forth when everyone is speaking the same language and using real data. The future of designing and developing applications with real data is bright. With the tools we have today, you can get a glimpse of what the future might hold. Let's walk through how we can prototype in Figma using real data from Looker. Like we mentioned earlier, Figma gives us access to a plugin ecosystem that can help us get real data into our Figma files. In Figma, you can find a plugin called Google Sheets Sync. Not an officially Google Develop plugin or anything, but setup is easy. You can just click install, and then you have access to it within your Figma files. In Looker, we can head on over to our admin section, find the actions area, and enable the Google Sheets action. This will let us send or schedule explorers to a Google Sheet. We can set up a schedule for ourselves and send the latest data when we need it. And we can take our newly created Google Sheet that'll stay up to date with the data based on our schedule or if we have it set to override when we send it again. And we can just copy that URL. Now we're going to head over to Figma, and Jerry's going to show you how this design process works. So in Figma, we've done a bit of pre-work. We have a few components built. We have one that represents a notification badge, one that represents a change in demand. Uh, we've taken those two components and kind of composed them inside this whole weather bar component. And this is the main piece that we're uh, prototyping here. We've taken this weather bar component. And we've also put it in the layout as would be displayed to the user. And so what we're trying to do here is set the context for our prototype by having components built for pieces we plan to hook data up to. With some planning here, uh, we can name our components and layers in a way that makes hooking up the data easier when we start uh, hooking things up. To begin working with data we exported from Looker, we're going to leverage the Sync from Sheets plugin. Here we have the plugin open, we've authenticated into our account, and we pasted the link to our Google Sheet that we exported from Looker. Once we do that, we can see a list of columns from the sheet and so the naming pattern is pound sign column name. And we're going to use those values later to start hooking our data up. We can go ahead and investigate some of these values and begin to make data-driven decisions about how we design this prototype. So if you look at city, for example, we can see that there's some long names and some short names. We can come in and look at the forecast, and we can see that there's one, two-digit and three-digit numbers that we have to account for. 
And this is a bit of a simplified example, but the point is from the start, we're using data to better understand the constraints we're working within. We may even see some columns of data we didn't know we had, and we can leverage those to improve our designs. So how do we hook this data up to our prototype? Let's go to our workspace and we'll give a demo on how we do that. Here in our workspace, we have a few instances of our layout component we showed earlier, and we've isolated just the weather bar component so we can start looking at how we may begin to hook data up to these pieces. So to begin hooking up the data, we have to adjust our layer names to match the column names in the Google Sheet. And this is how the plugin keeps everything in sync. So remember the naming pattern was pound sign column name. And so if you look at city name, for example here, the first way to go about hooking this up is just naming it pound sign city. So if we look over here, we'll see that it matches pound sign city here. Okay, we can also see we see that for forecast, which maps down to the forecast column down here. And then we have um, alerts, which maps here. And then we also have uh, predicted demand. And so if we go down and look at our next column here, our second group, what we'll see this is also named pound sign city. This is pound sign forecast, etc. So what's happening here is since this is the first instance and this is the second instance, when we import these values from the Google Sheet, what's going to happen is this is going to pull values in from the first row, and this one's going to pull in values from the second row. And there's another way to go about doing this. If we're interested in specific data points, we can come down and inspect these pieces. So here, this one is pound sign 23. This one's pound sign 23 as well. And so what we're doing here is we're looking at these individual pieces here, and we're trying to map these to row 23 in the Google Sheet. And so we thought that point of data might have looked interesting for some reason, and we wanted to test case that scenario. You can also go ahead and mix these things up too. So here, this one's pound sign 87 pound sign uh, forecast 15, um, pound predicted demand 17, and pound dot alerts dot 12. And so this dot pattern dot 12 dot seven, um, this maps it to, again, to a specific row. So we thought this group of data was interesting for some reason. We wanted to test this case. We looked at the data. We thought it looked like an interesting combination of pieces that might give us a good edge case to test it. Okay, so now that we have our file set up, to actually begin bringing in this data from Looker, all we have to do is just hit the sync to Figma button. So we're gonna push that and see what happens. Um, watch these layer names here because these are all gonna update. So let's go ahead and hit that. And great, right away, our design is updated and we can see some edge cases that we need to solve for. You know, we really need a better way to solve for these longer names here. What happens when that text overflows? We need to adjust our temperature display so that it handles three digit temperatures more gracefully. We need to account or design that takes into account a change in demand when it goes negative. So this green text doesn't do a good job at conveying the intent of a, de of a decreasing uh, demand. And then also if we look up here, we'll see our notification badge. It doesn't really work well with two digit numbers. And so we may want a way to um, update this to make this look a little more refined. And in the end, if we scroll over here, maybe what we can see is we close this plugin and look at it. Here's a design, we took all those edge cases and we kind of um, updated our design. So now we can handle longer names better, our three digit temperature doesn't overflow, our notification badge works well with two digits. And um, what we did here is we used real data to inform and improve our design thinking. And, and this helped us catch edge cases we might not have expected um, before handing this off to a developer. And so the great thing is um, if the data updates, you can just export it from Looker and you could resync the sheet, making sure our design is using the freshest data. All right, it's time for the developer handoff. We have our prototype finished and we're gonna send it back over to our developer so they know what to build. We send a link to the prototype and a few days later, the developer comes back to let us know they updated the data and prediction model and there's actually new columns of data that we can use and they're curious if we wanna go back and do another design pass to see if we can include some of this new interesting data in our weather prediction feature. So instead of the conversation being about our design breaking and us needing to fix it, it's about an opportunity to actually create more value for the user through this new data that we were able to include. So we go back and we do some more design work. When we're done, we go tell the developer that the prototype has been updated, and he mentions that he actually saw it update in Figma already because he had the file open while we were editing the prototype. The old way of doing design without data leads to frustration and constantly needing to fix our designs based on the problems that our developer finds. Nobody wants to get that message from the developer. And the new way it leads to quicker value and reinforces positive additions in a simpler, more efficient cycle. So instead of us always fixing our design, 
we get to take the chance to go back and try to add value to our design for our next iteration. So to recap, Looker enabled us to send data to a Google Sheet using actions that you can enable in Looker. Figma plugin enabled us to pull that data from Google Sheets into our Figma plugin, which helped us design with real data and enabled a clear, complete, efficient process with our developer without a lot of negative back and forth. Thanks for taking the time to watch our session. I hope you enjoyed learning about how you can prototype with real data and hopefully just whet your appetite a little bit for what the future can hold and what you can actually do today.